Have you ever been doing a boring task in Blender and just wish you could speed it up? Well, with the new Node Tools feature in Blender 4.0, you can. It essentially allows you to create your own modifiers and your own actions that you can set in menus here using the Geometry Nodes interface. It's pretty amazing, especially for people like me that are way too dumb to learn Python. Now, in this video, we're gonna walk through how to create your own circle array modifier just like this. Also, if you stay till the end of the video, I have a little surprise extra tip where I will show you how to create a a stitches effect. Now circular arrays are something that you can achieve with the existing array modifier. However, it takes several steps. It's a bit clunky. And when I was trying to build this castle, for example, it took me just a long time to continually set up the array modifiers and they're breaking when I move them around. So what we are going to do is use this new node tools to create, in my opinion, a much easier and stable to use modifier. So let's go ahead and look at how we can do that. So here, we're actually just gonna go ahead and use the default cube. So we'll grab the default cube here, we'll drag this up here, and we're gonna come down here to the geometry node editor. Now, in this view, you see that we have modifier up here, and we also have tool. So modifier is geometry nodes as you know them currently in previous versions of Blender. However, tool is the new mode that allows us to create tools. So first, I'm gonna walk you through kind of how to use tools and how to organize it. And then we're gonna go ahead and create the modifier. Now, real quick, before I move on, I wanna show you that on the manual here, they actually have a page dedicated to the node-based tools. It has a lot of helpful information. In particular, it tells you tool-specific nodes. A very useful one is the 3D cursor node. So for example, you can plug in the location data of the 3D cursor. So if you wanted to create a repeater, you could start wherever the 3D cursor is. Well, let's dive in on how to use the tool. So what exactly is tool mode? So Here's a brief intro to it. So if we go ahead, we switch here to tool mode and I create new and I'm gonna just do the most basic example. I'm gonna say extrude. Now, if we go ahead here and we add an extrude mesh, you would expect to see some behavior there, but it won't work. And that's because we're in tool mode. So we have essentially created a script through kind of visual scripting is one way to look at it. Let's go ahead here and we will come over here into edit mode. Now, what this works on determines on your settings up here. We have mesh and hair curves, and here we have modes, edit mode and sculpt mode. Those are kind of self-explanatory. We're gonna stay in mesh and edit mode. So I'll go ahead here, tap into edit mode here. And now you see we have this new little button. Now, if I click this, you'll see that we have what is labeled as non-assets. I'll explain that later. And if I hit extrude, you see that it extrudes everything in here. So by creating this extrude, it will then run this geometry node all the way through. Now this is in edit mode, so this is creating actual destructive geometry. I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. Now we can go ahead and change the group inputs. So if I go ahead here and hit offset scale and drag this here into the group input, and I go ahead and run that again, you'll see that down here we get this pop-up and now we can actually control that. So you can imagine how as you begin to add nodes, this can become very powerful. Now let's look at how we can go about organizing it. So if we wanted to create this extrude as a operator, what we would go ahead and do is bring in our asset browser window here. We would go to the current file here and unassigned, and you'll see that it's not showing up. And that's because we need to come over here and we need to go to blender file, go down here to node groups, find our node group, which we've named extrude, and we'll go ahead and mark as an asset. You'll see now it appears in the unassigned. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna name this something. So right by default, it'll give us catalog. Let's go ahead and call this shoddy tools. Now I'll go ahead and drag that on there. And now when we tab in edit mode here, you see that now we have made our own menu. So you can actually use the node tools to create your own menus and multiple things there. But we can also go ahead and add this to other menus. So let's say that we wanted to go ahead and add this to just one of these random menus. If I go ahead, hit add here. Let's say that we wanna add it here. So we'll go ahead, we'll name this add, go ahead and save that and then now when we come up here under the add you'll see that it appears down here under the extrude and that will also work under the shift a menu as well now let's go ahead and look at how to create a modifier with the circle array and make something that's actually useful to use my dynamic vfx pack is now on sale at blender market and this has completely customizable vfx assets that you can drag and drop right into your viewport both ev and cycles compatible if you're interested you can also go check out a free sample pack also if you're interested in my patreon i have materials projects time lapses video walkthroughs and discounts available there as well so I'm gonna go ahead here, start a fresh file, and we're going to use the default cube again. We'll go ahead, drag up here, add a geometry node editor here. 
and I'm going to click new here and I'm going to type in circle array. So we'll come up here, we'll switch to tool mode here, click new, add a circle array, and that's going to be the name of our modifier. Now what we're going to do is under here, where we have our properties here for the group output, you'll see that we have modifier and tool. And if we click modifier, that will make it accessible in our add modifier menu. So what I'm going to do is go ahead here. We're going to add a mesh circle and put that there. And then we are going to add an instance on points. And we're just gonna go ahead, drag that in between there. Now the mesh here is going to be our points. And we'll go ahead here and drag the geometry into our instance. Perfect. Now we want to expose some of these parameters and let's also give some control over the rotation as well. So what we can do is go ahead and drag the mesh circle here and the radius here. So we're gonna go ahead now and add the modifier to our object so we can see what we're doing. So if we come over here to the modifier menu, click add modifier, come to the unassigned, you'll see that our circle array appears there and you'll see that it is now starting to work. So let's go ahead here, crank up that radius and let's lower those vertices so there's not so many of them. Perfect. Now we can go ahead and begin adjusting these parameters. So I'm gonna go ahead here, grab the vertices here, and we can name this to amount, and then we'll leave radius as radius because that makes sense. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and adjust it so that we can affect the rotation as well. So we'll go ahead here and we will add an align Euler to vector. And if we take a normal node, we can go ahead here and we can plug that here into the vector, We'll take this rotation, plug it into the rotation there, and you'll see now that these boxes are all appearing to align on the Euler vector there. So let's go ahead and we'll drag the factor here into the radius and we'll call this align rotation. And now we can go ahead and turn this on or off so that that gives us that option there as well. Perfect, so now you can see that we have created a very simple circle array, and you can go ahead and continue to add parameters here. For example, let's go ahead and take this scale here. We'll add a math node here, and we'll just zero this out, perfect. We'll go ahead here, just plug that into the scale, and we will top one in the bottom here, and then we will drag that value out here, and we can name this scale. And then we can also go ahead and change the scale of our objects there. And just like that, we have a circle array modifier that will save us a ton of time. You can go ahead and delete the geometry node system here. And then you would just go about the same process of naming it in the asset browser, and then that would organize it over here. So then you can go ahead, save all of these into a project file or a folder. And then if you go to your preferences and file path and point it there as an asset browser, then you will have a, your custom menus and custom tools as you can imagine, this is incredibly powerful for creating tools yourself. And this is just a simple example, but as you know, Geometry Notes gets very complex. So I expect that we'll start seeing some extremely interesting uh, modifiers and tool packs appearing on Blender Market soon. But as I said, I promised I would show you how to do the stitches from my short film here. So let's take a look at that too. It's actually quite simple. So here you can see that I have the curve set up that if I go ahead here, just delete this curve and draw along here, you can see that it's kind of creating this stitch-like pattern across. And it's a pretty simple setup down here. So first of all, for the stitch object, what I did is I just created a torus, cut it in half and filled the caps here. Then what you can do is go into edit mode here and adjust it to the origin here to adjust the height of these stitches. So if I come back out here and I grab that tab into edit mode here, you can see how that will move it inwards and outwards on the object there. So if you wanted to create tighter stitches, you could go ahead and do that. But if we go ahead here, grab that geometry node system here. This is on a curve based system. What you want to do is take your group input, plug that into a joint geometry and plug that at the end. Now you're going to plug that into a resample curve and into the point section of an instance on points. Now we can control the amount of stitches there. And then we want them to rotate to follow along our object. So we're going to take a position node and plug that into the align Euler to vector node. I set mine to Z here. This may depend on the direction you have your stitch. And then you just go ahead and you can drag that stitch in here. Leave it to original as stitch and plug that into the instance. And with that, you have a very simple stitch generator.